Hello, everybody. Welcome back. It's me, Rosalie. Welcome to the Ultimate World Music Reaction Channel. I am so excited about this recording set. Here we go. I'm so excited about these videos that I get to record today. All kinds of artists from all around the world. And I want to I'm going to check out someone brand new today. Shout out today goes to my patron and supporter, Amok Oile. He asked for me to check out a guy named Dave. Santon Dave. I hope I'm saying his name right. And this guy is a British rapper and I have never heard of him but I was told I should check this out this song particularly I want to listen to question time was put out five years ago 12 million views and a lot of his tracks when I'm just looking at the list have so many have so many views like this guy seems to be really loved and enjoyed by a lot of people and I think it's time to check out some more rap I have no idea what to expect but I'm excited as always, like, share, subscribe, all the links in the description below if you want to connect, buy a coffee, say thank you, become a patron. Keep in mind, there is, there is exclusive content available on patreon.com and for members on buymeacoffee.com, extra videos behind the scenes. Depending on the membership you purchase, you get access to fan chat, to direct access to me, exclusive Q&As and AMAs. We have a fun community going. You get early access to videos, behind the scenes content. So check out the packages and as always, like share subscribe here we go dave with question time are you ready i am Look. question for the new prime minister how do you have a heart so sinister? How are we so wasteful when people are dying in Somalia, Afghanistan, Egypt, Libya? The irony is we have no business in Syria, but kids are getting killed for all the business in Syria. And then they try and tell you that it's ISIS, it's ISIS. In their attempts at killing it, how many civilians died? So what's the difference between us and them? When you got drones killing kids just touching 10, then when a bomb goes off, every politician's lost like that last strike, it didn't kill a hundred men. You ain't the same as them, but all that fuel for the fire is what you gave to them and what you take from them this beat is cool this beat to me is fairly straightforward when it comes to hip-hop and rap right a beat that i would say is solid to rap to um it's cool to hear that he is rapping in his british accent versus trying to sound american versus you know, sounding different than where he comes from or the way he speaks, which sometimes we find with acting, right? You'll have an actor in a movie. It makes sense because they're acting, but they'll, you know, speak in English or British English or other accents. And then when you hear them on an interview, it's very different. You find that in music too sometimes. For example, Adele, right? Her speaking voice and the accent she has when she speaks is different than the way she sings and the way she enunciates things when she's singing. So it's cool to see that he is not changing that for the rap here. We can see it's already heavily political, calling things out in the system. Uh, let's keep going. Let me go back just a bit. My life, I know my mum's been working In and out of nursing, struggling, hurting I just find it fucked that the government is struggling To care for a person that cares for a person So where's the discussion on wages and budgets How they made them redundant When I was a young'un The letters in her car said my mum was overdraft But somehow I still had dinner money in my pocket And even the little things like ordering pizza Were probably the reason for overtime in the evening Five till ten, six hours of sleeping For 22 years my mum was doing it cleaning dreaming that her kids would have a better life going bed at night struggling with getting by that's the reality for millions of people in a nation where a lot of us were looking for a second try a question for the new prime minister and please tell me if i'm being narrow-minded but how do we spend so much money on defense and weapons to wage war when the nhs is dying bursting at the seams and what about them people that voted for us to leave for the money that it would see 350 million we give to the eu every week that our health service needs but now them politicians got what they wanted can you see an empty promise or a post on the street nurses in tears because they're working every hour of the week and they still don't have the money that they need you brought the heart of the nation to its knees underpaid understaffed overworked and overseen by people who can't ever understand how it feels to live life like you and me patients lying in the corridors because doctors can't even find a bed for them 
Okay, real quick, there's there's some cool flows here, some cool cadences going on. His rap, the rhythm to his rapping is cool. Um, even things like under, you know, underpaid, understarved, understand, right? There, there's elements, linguistic elements here that are kind of cool, the way that he's playing with words to communicate what he's trying to say. Sleep. I remember A and E and all them sickening screams of a little girl waiting for a surgeon to be seen. Privatized healthcare, guns for police, increased uni fees. Is this what they're selling us? Or well, let me remind you, just in case you've forgotten that we live in Great Britain, not in Donald Trump's America. Speaking of America, stating the president, with all due respect, I've got something to say to them. I just find it funny you can't give a hand to Palestine, but you can trade whole arms with Saudi Arabia. It's interesting how he keeps taking a break and goes, um, we'll talk about what he's saying afterward without getting too political. This is a very political song, obviously. And I think there is a place and a need for people, especially in social media today, to express what they're thinking, right? Freedom of speech is, is a privilege, um, is a right, but it's a privilege in certain countries um, because in many places it's not um, accessible. And so I think there is a need, regardless if you agree or disagree with some of the things he's saying, there's a need for people to communicate what they're thinking and to get other people to think. I think nowadays we either have one group or the other, it feels that way, according to the media, on extremes. And is, it would be easy, even for myself if I'm not careful, to hear certain things that we may or may not agree with and go <gasps> and get defensive. But I think there is a place to hear each other out, to hear certain parts and validity to the things that are said. Not that everything is right, that everything everybody says is accurate, um, but you can find truth and facts and common sense in different arguments. And I think a lot of young people or, you know, every gener many generations will listen to things on YouTube and on other platforms of social media. And hopefully there's enough educated people and emotionally intelligent people that can listen and that can keep what they agree with, you know, be brave enough to question what they feel and think. Um, yeah, in a place where uh, he has a lot of subscribers, over 1.65 million, where people seem to relate or seem to feel heard or seen or where people look up to someone that can express and communicate what they're thinking. Uh, let's keep going. Yeah. Look. Look, the beats, I got a question though. for the new prime minister At Grenfell Tower, your response was ridiculous You hid like a coward behind your five million Dodge responsibility and acted like you're innocent And I can see you're terrified You're not good at telling lies, I'm getting why You stay away from everything that's televised You look like a robot and you don't speak with any life It feels to me like any guy in press could have said them lines Imagine going to the council for the safety of your block And you got kids but they're ignoring you at every time Everyone who knew about a challenge should really be going prison under the ruler joint enterprise but if it ain't a little kid with a knife i bet that judge is going easy when he's giving him time they don't deserve to be free any builder mp that knew about the conditions but did it to save cheese when i listened to the things that the residents had seen i was so shocked i couldn't even speak families they know that had died in their sleep how you choke on the smoke when you're struggling to breathe the glow from the fire the panic when you hear all the sirens the crackling the popping and the muffled out screams the fear in the eyes of a man that See, even that, like the, the choke, the smoke that you choke, like really rhythmic, um, great wordplay and various literary forms, metaphors and his cadence. There's a cool flow here, um, struggling to breathe, you know, and the crackling and just, just very neat words to convey a message. And it works well with the flow. Here in the eyes of a man that was trapped who jumped 15 floors from the tower to the street. I could only hear a fraction of the pain and the grief. Closing my eyes, trying hard not to cry. At the joy and relief in the face of a man when a woman from the flat said his neighbor was alive. No help from the council when keeping any list or the people that survived, his neighbors and peers. And for that whole meeting, I could see that he was trying. So his smile was an island in a sea full of tears. Look, I got a message for our old prime minister. David Cameron I mean you fucked us, resigned and sneaked out the firing line I want to know how you managed it And are you bathing in the sun while them papers have a run At the woman that you left here to handle it You're gonna teach a little lad to be the man that's got a plan And then the moment that it fails to abandon it Are there bullies in his school And when you pick them up after class embarrassment i mean you never gave a fuck about the youth and that's the truth there's no sympathy for you or your cabinet i really wish i could have seen how you were scrambling when you lost the referendum that you had to win 
I feel like politicians are all addicts in a big fat game But it's lives that you gamble with I've got a question for the leader of the Labour Party Jeremy Corbyn, where do you want to take the country to? Honestly, I want to put my trust in you But you can understand why if I've got trust issues Do you really have the faith of your party? Do you really have faith in the party that will come with you? And how do you plan on keeping all the promises? Man, if I'm being honest, sir, I'm struggling to get with it I just ain't getting it Everybody's great until you get them into office And then guys start forgetting things Prove to us you're different Don't promise me anything Go and get justice for Sean Charles and Edison And if you haven't had the thought to vote yet Or protest cause you don't really see the progress I hope you know that what they're saying is affecting us The small steps are way better than no steps I like that da 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 Question time. Okay. Ra da 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 Alright. Okay. The weekend. Was he helping produce this? Why did it list the weekend in the end? Okay, very interesting. All right, uh, y'all have to help me in the comments below why he mentioned The weekend. Um, let's get straight to it. We're not going to talk about all the lyrics because there was a lot. We're not going to go into the different political people that he addressed and questioned, which, you know, the song Question Time, the title of the song makes a lot of sense since he's questioning all these people, former politicians and what they did and how it ended, current politicians and their future plans. And, um, a lot of political references here, references to various events, both in what he was rapping as well as in the video and in the things going on in the background. Video, videography, cinematography, cool setup, right? Him setting up the camera, sitting in front of the camera at the table like a politician, if you will, or like a news reporter. I guess different ways to, um, to look at that or an interviewer asking different questions. Definitely very political. Um, again, we're not going to go into all those political elements, but let me share a couple of thoughts. I think there is a need, even for this young generation, for there to be freedom of speech and a platform where they can express their frustrations, right? When you have a system, like when we look at history, we have dictatorships where there were a select few that went down in history as brave rebels who tried to assassinate the dictator, who spoke up against the regime, who disobeyed the law and hid those in need, right? Let's say, for example, those in Germany who hid Jewish people or people that um, stood up and tried to fight the system. They're out there. And when you are in the middle of a war, when you're in the middle of a very bad system, um, it takes a lot of bravery and courage. And there are people that have gone down in history for doing that. Then, of course, you have a lot of people that stand up that will, will never be remembered or heard of in the history books because a lot of that goes, go just, you know, flies over our heads, say, for example, in third world countries when there's civil wars or, um, militia going and destroying villages and say there's somebody there in a village that is, does something heroic to stand up against these, these well, bullies is not even the right word, these terrorists to defend their family. They will never go down and they may never go down in, uh, in history, at least in a world renowned history book, um, because nobody knew this was even going on in the Western world. So you have all these different scenarios in our day and age with social media, it is a privilege to have a platform and a way to communicate things we feel, to stand up against corruption, to call it out. And hopefully some of these politicians um, saw this and are taking it to heart. Politics are tricky. I don't know enough about it. It's not a topic that interests me in the sense that I want to get all into it. But even just watching a fictional show like Designated Survivor has been very educational, um, even though I stopped because I start, I didn't like the direction it was taking. Um, it was very crazy to see some of the topics. Uh, several of these episodes and seasons were recorded years ago before more recent events even occurred. And there it was just weird. It started getting eerie where things were happening in this scripted fictional show years ago that more recently occurred in reality. And maybe not for the first time, so maybe that's where they pulled it from, different events, but it was just weird to see how some of these things that they were addressing years ago in this show 
was happening now. Politics is a messy place, and I believe there's a lot of corruption in it. Now, I do want to believe that just with every profession, there are also people there that are doing it for a good reason. Just like you have corrupt police officers, there are also very good officers, many of them. Just as much as you have some jacked up people teaching that should not be teaching children, there are a lot of people that have a huge heart and really want to make a difference in the world. And I want to believe that that's even in politics. Maybe way less from a percentage standpoint, maybe. But I do believe there's a few that maybe want to do well. But politics is messy and it's a whole lot of red tape to get through. That is not to make excuses, by the way. I agree that we need to take care of one another. I agree that it is not okay that we're funding, you know, going into countries, killing people or supplying armed, so supplying weapons that are now being used by the terrorists and those oppressing their own people um, versus empowering a nation. If we go anywhere to help, it should be to empower that nation to be self-sufficient. But unfortunately, as I mentioned in one of my other videos, a lot of times it's a game of risk. You go places and many of us know it's not necessarily for the reasons they say it is. It's not necessarily, you know, to for revenge on some attack or to save these people. Um, we've seen that in history, how going into places sometimes makes things worse, how suddenly withdrawing makes things worse and is a bridge, is a, a breach of our agreements and our promises. And then you have situations where where unless we're going somewhere to help people be self-sufficient, it's just a power play. Because when you have control in a certain military force or uh, one country is strong in another. This is strategic so that uh, in regards to the surrounding countries. And I don't want to go into a lot of political detail or give you specific examples. I'm speaking in general terms. But I think those of you who know even just the game of risk, you know that you take different countries and you have troops in different countries, not just for the sake of saving people, but for the sake of power, to avoid attack, to avoid being weakened as a nation, to maybe honor certain agreements with different allies. And so I think it's definitely not okay to be, I'm against war and I don't think it's right to fund um, people weapons and then it destroys a country from within um, and the ones at home are not being taken care of. I know there's a lot of topics that we could talk about for hours when it comes to politics, when it comes to economy, when it comes to welfare. Every country is different. He's clearly from Britain and he's speaking to the prime minister and to the cabinet and politicians in Great Britain. Though he does a little reference to even America and to Trump and to what he thinks about all that. Now, I will say some of the things that I've noticed, even from Germany, that people say in Germany is based on whatever the media tells them there. And I think it's very important to keep in mind, regardless of where you stand, you cannot trust some of the things that are being said. But of course, not only in this country, but even in other countries, things will be presented a certain way. People will make their opinions. And unfortunately, and this is where social media is a trap, while it can be a blessing to have a platform to speak up against corruption, the trap behind it is that if we're not careful, we start getting our source, our information from the wrong sources. And I'm not saying that to say what he's saying is wrong or incorrect. I'm just speaking in general terms to bring that balance. It's good to stand up, good to have freedom of speech, good to address corruption and uh, injustices. But the other extreme is just listening to, not saying he did that, I'm just speaking generally, listening to social media to form our opinions. And then you have different people in other different countries who will form their opinion about a nation's president, about politics, based on what the TikTokers are saying and YouTube is saying and Twitter and Instagram and all these pages. So it's, it's tricky. I do believe there's a lot of corruption. I do think it's awesome to have people that stand up and question that. And um, it is important that we have enough emotional intelligence to listen and to go, okay, I can agree with this. I don't know about this because it may not be my field of expertise. I disagree with this. You know, really having conversations where we can exchange and learn and grow because it's not just this or that. There's validity to all the various sides. And um, even when it comes to economy, it's tricky. It's not cool that some people are treading water and just working their butts off to make ends meet, working day and night, hardly, hardly getting any sleep like he was referencing his mother here, just to survive, hoping for a better life. Uh, the flip side, and that also, of course, you have to keep in mind where he's uh, speaking f as a European. The system in Europe is very different than in America, and even from country to country varies in Europe. Um, then you have a situation like 
even in America, where there's many people that feel that way. But even that's a tricky topic, right? Because here in America, for example, you have people who are really working their butts off. They're treading water. It feels so hopeless. I've been there where I needed help from the government, where I worked three jobs as a single mother. But then you also have the flip side where there's people who will complain about not making enough, but they are not necessarily doing much to enhance their career, to get the certificate they need to apply for a better job, or they're spending it. America is one of the most consumeristic countries where even in, in a pandemic with the, the economy shut down, the, the parking lots of stores will be fairly full because people are still shopping. So it's it, to me, I always like, I want to be fair and I want to say on one hand, this is valid. Yes. But on the other hand, this, and I don't want to talk about every single aspect there, but just looking at the economy, for example, there is a lot of corruption and it is not cool that politicians are getting rich and people, regular civilians who are paying their taxes, who are going about their life, trying to make it better for their kids are working their butts off to live in poverty. Not cool. But on the flip side of that, you also have people that need to take responsibility and can't just point at the government all the time. And at the 1% they think is to blame when they're not making better choices. And better choices include sacrifices, right? For example, here in America, there's a whole lot of poor people that are still walking around with a really nice uh, phone and really great shoes or looting, but not for bread, but for TVs, which are not a necessity. So it's like you have everything and their mama on this planet. You have all these different possibilities of situations. And unfortunately, it's not so black and white. Unfortunately, it's not just, oh, everything's the government's fault. I don't agree with that. I think we all are responsible for our own life. Yes, some of us have pulled harder cards than others. Um, some of us pull shorter sticks, whatever the idiom is. Um, and the government has a responsibility towards its citizens. Um, so it can't all just be put on the government, in my opinion. But the flip side of that is also just taking whatever is handed to us instead of standing up and speaking out like this gentleman. So I, I definitely think that there's a need for, regardless if you agree or disagree with everything he's saying, there's a need for people to speak up and stand out. And hopefully those who have a good heart, who do get into politics because they want to serve, would hear something like this and try as much as they can to work through that red tape and all these games to do better for its people. I do think it's both and. Does that make sense? Leadership working to do better for its country, but people also taking responsibility um, and helping one another, right? Um, anyways, I'm, I'm getting on a rant, but I do like it. Um, when it comes to his rap abilities, it was cool, like I said, to hear that British accent was nice, cool cadences, cool rhythmic elements, cool wordplay, but it was nothing, to be honest with you, that I was mind blown from a rap standpoint. I think he may be getting a lot of attention I may, I could be wrong. I need to check out some of his other work. I could see that he's liked by a lot of people, followed and listened to by many because he's speaking out on heavy topics and he's rapping in a good way, but about important topics. It's actually of substance. I could see, I feel like there's this new, I feel like there is a, a need for um, people really speaking out on things not shying away from hard topics and it being something of substance. I think that's why many people like or appreciate Tom McDonald as rebellious and out there as he may seem. People like NF and the hard topics he talks about, right? NF more being the, on the emotional side of things. Tom McDonald calling out more crap polit politically and just addressing all kinds of different topics, challenging the status quo. And then here, someone like Dave addressing political things. Now, chances are there's a whole lot of other topics and things he raps about. But it's cool to see a young generation uh, that is speaking out on things. And I could see that being appreciated by many. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. As always, like, share, subscribe. I will see you on the next ride. Ayo! Hey